We've chosen to demonstrate two biopsies, uh, the two most common sites that we use for our epidermal skin testing. Um, we'll use the upper thigh as well as do a lower calf. In our measurements, again, we'll measure from the greater trochanter, measure 10 centimeters down. I don't usually use a surgical marker to uh, mark the site. Uh, many times when you're cleaning with alcohol, the marker tends to bleed a little bit. So I focus on infiltrating with the lidocaine and keeping my eye on the bleb rather than actually making a mark. So we'll, we've already discussed with our patient to confirm that they have no allergies to lidocaine or epinephrine. Uh, it's also wise to find out if they have any allergies to latex. Uh, we use all non-latex equipment, gloves, even bandages, because there are so many patients that do have latex allergies. We'll open up our kit. And then prep our site. Using a rotation as well as some friction here to clean with our alcohol swab. I always inform our patients that the lidocaine can sting and sometimes just um, distracting them by having them take a deep breath. Here's your initial stick. Take a deep breath, Bob. Inhale and then exhale. And a little bit bigger sting right now. What you're watching for is a nice little bleb to develop. Typically, we fill up our syringes to about 0.7 cc's. You only need 0 0.4, 0 0.5 cc's. Um, this is the area that will take our biopsy. You want to be careful not to actually use the area where the tract is from injecting the lidocaine. Um, if you're concerned about, if, is the patient numb? I, you can kind of give them a test. Do you feel this, Bob? Yep. You did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me go ahead and inject a little bit more then. Take it from here if it's just injected for the first time. Okay. What we're looking for is a nice little um, bleb. That will be our actual biopsy site. Uh, we don't want to biopsy right over the tract where we injected the lidocaine, but you can always test to see if they're numb. Can you feel that, Bob? No. Okay. Now I'm going to be very careful to set my lidocaine needle back down without actually capping it, and you'll see our, our challenge in getting this sticky little specimen into our uh, Zamboni fixative. It, it tends to stick to your forceps. so. Um, Lynn likes to use the needle itself to scrape that specimen off. Okay. When we do our biopsy, you want to have nice, firm um, pressure and rotate, not all in one direction, but back and forth. So add a little firm pressure as we rotate back and forth. You don't need to advance the needle or the uh, biopsy the whole way, usually about two-thirds um, to three-fourths of the metal part is, is deep enough. The next thing is be very careful not to grab your specimen at the top. This is the area that we're actually looking for the uh, small nerves, and you don't want to damage them, so you need to reach under the specimen and gently pull up. Uh, sometimes that actually is all it needs to, dis to uh, remove it. Otherwise you just clip and if you can see Lynn then uses the end of the needle to transfer the specimen into the Zamboni. If your plans are to do a second biopsy, you need to be very, very careful that you don't actually stick 
your forceps into the Zamboni and then go down and you do another specimen because that does irritate the skin. So using the needle tends to help. Lynn was very, very careful where she placed the um, cap on to not crush the specimen. The Zamboni is filled up in those tubes to the very top and it needs to be that way so that the specimen doesn't air dry. But then she gently rotated it so that the specimen travels down to the bottom of the tube um, and now is, is saturated. Okay. Um, one of the things I always ask my patients, are they on any type of um, blood thinners, even aspirin can cause a little bit excessive bleeding there is no requirements that they need to be off of those, but you might notice just in requiring a little extra pressure after the specimen is actually taken. Um, your kits supply you with a little dot band-aid, but what we find, since there are no actual physical limitations after we've done our specimen here, we like to use a little bit more pressure dressing. We fold up a little two by two and then apply a non-latex bandage so that it's occluded on all four sides. This band-aid's gonna stay on for the next 24 hours and we tend then not to have any oozing through the bandages or onto their clothes. All right, our second site will be our lower calf area. Um, one of the things I try to look at is, is it obvious, the, the vein running up the midline here, and it, it really isn't on Bob, but we will still measure from the ankle and 10 centimeters and go a little bit anterior to that. Again, cleaning with alcohol, nice friction and rotation, circular fashion there. Uh, it's always wise at this point to let your patient know that sometimes the lower calf is a bit more sensitive than the thigh area, um, and that's why I do the thigh first and then the lower calf. All right, Bob, this might sting just a bit more, so take a nice deep breath now and exhale. And your second sting, take a deep breath in and exhale. Now, sometimes if your bleb isn't real obvious, I will go ahead and hold my finger on it so I don't lose my sight. Can you feel this, Bob? Yeah. You can. All right. Do another little injection here. If you go a little too deep, they can still feel pain. So you want to go as close to the skin surface as possible. How about this, Bob? No. Okay. With Bob's coloring, it's a little more difficult in the lower extremity here to actually see that bleb. That's why I'm holding my finger in that spot. Gentle rotation and pressure at the same time. Again, being very careful to reach under the specimen and lift up. Not squeezing from the top and damaging our tissue. Lynn's going to use the end of the needle. You got it there? Okay. Lynn and I like to use what we call our, our double um, labeling system. We make out the labels, whether we're doing right or left, thigh or calf. We make those out ahead of time, but we don't label our tube until the sample is already in there. If you pre-label your tubes, you tend to run the risk of picking up the wrong one, and then you can't identify with the, that you've made that um, transfer incorrectly. So we have lower calf area here, right, Lynn? Yes, lower okay. calf. Again, we'll fold up a little two by two, place that over our biopsy site, and then apply 
our pressure dressing. Again, pressure dressings are not necessary. Um, you can use a simple Band-Aid over it, but um, they can ooze for the next 24 hours, and that's not unusual. So we like to just go ahead and apply the pressure now.